Well, welcome back. Uh, we're going to uh, delve into some of the beyond in this course. And so let's get going. This specialization of five courses covers a wide range of topics, all related to foundational principles and practices for learners who, like you, want to cover the basics, but also want to go beyond. Well, you may quite rightly be wondering what a kitchen studio is and what it has to do with photography or going beyond anything. We will not be offering cooking lessons in this course, although I do make a very good salad. In this lesson and the next, we're going to address areas of photography that are more practical and ones that some of our students at Michigan State University are finding important in giving them opportunities not only to create photographs but to get paid for it. We'll look at practical applications of photography that can help you in your own life to make pictures that you'll need and perhaps even open the door to helping others by providing valuable services through your photography as well. Small businesses, artists, makers of craft items, and makers of just about anything you can imagine who were once limited to selling their goods only to folks that they could meet in person now have the ability to sell their goods to the world with the advent of eBay, Etsy, Shopify, and even their own web-based internet stores. With that new retailing opportunity has come a big increase in demand for quality photography of those objects. Many of these folks have tried making their own photographs of their objects and found they just don't have the ability to do that. Well, maybe you do. I'm contacted quite often by small businesses and people in our area who are craft makers, from antique store owners to jewelers and woodworkers, textile designers and so forth, asking for student help in photographing their wares. Our first kitchen studio project will involve copy stand photography, but we won't be using a copy stand and DSLR camera. A professional setup for such work might include a very fine device like this, a Kaiser ReproKid copy stand with its own set of lights and probably a fine camera with a macro lens mounted on the center post. This setup retails for about $400 US and it's worth every penny of it to a professional and that's without the camera of course. We'll do things a little bit differently and we'll also get very good results because we'll know the principles of copy stand photography and apply them with items that we can get fairly inexpensively or items you probably already have such as a tripod. This is a field that's not normally associated with the smartphone, but like retailing and pretty much everything else in the digital age, those sorts of limitations are changing too. Maybe you need to create documentary photographs of flat art objects that you own for an insurance record, or maybe you or one of your family members is an artist interested in copywriting or selling their artwork paintings, prints, or drawings. Or perhaps you want to make good copies of family snapshot album pictures. Or maybe unexpectedly, your boss has given you the job of figuring out how to have good quality digital copies made of the photographs from the company anniversary picnic, say, 50 years ago. Well, at some point, the opportunity to use what you already know about photography to make such documentary photo records of flat art objects is going to arrive and you'll be ready. You might even find that such work is something that you enjoy and that there are people in your community who will pay for such services too. Welcome to my kitchen table studio. Come on in and let's get started. When I handheld my iPhone in an effort to make quality photographs 
of a lovely little painting by the Nantucket Island artist Sybil Goldsmith, I got this result. It is awful. The flash on the iPhone created a giant direct reflection right in the center of the painting, wiping out its details in a puddle of white glare. The edges of the painting are noticeably darker than the center, and the lighting is generally uneven overall. Well, then I got this result. It too is awful. The dimensions are skewed as if the wooden frame was warped, and the bottom of the frame looks longer than the top. While the glare is gone from the center, there's light fall off from the bottom to the top of the painting, and the depth of field is shallow enough that parts of the painting are noticeably out of focus. Well, here are the tools I used to create my pop-up kitchen table copy stand. Let's go through them so you can see how easy it is for you to create a similar setup in your own kitchen. First, you'll need a smartphone. Out of its case so that it is nice and flat, with all of its controls easily accessed and without the bulk of that case. The item in the middle is a smartphone tripod mount. It happens to be by the company Mi Photo. You'll attach your smartphone to that device and then to a tripod, which is the item on the right. It too is a Mi Photo brand. It's the backpacker model, which I carry with me just almost everywhere, which can allow you to place the camera, in this case the smartphone, as low as 17 inches above the object to be photographed. Now that we have a camera and something to support it, we'll need some lights. Now I'm going to use two loom cubes, and I've shown you these before, and actually I'll show them to you again in another lesson. A loom cube is a product introduced in 2016. It's only one and a half inches square, but it puts out 1500 lumens of 6000 degree Kelvin light, and that's continuous light or strobe. They cost about $80 retail, but if you're one of our specialization subscribers, once you finish your capstone requirements, you'll get a major discount on loom cubes and other items. That'll be coming your way via email. They're in my bag every day, and I find all sorts of uses for them. I'm going to mount each of those lamps on an Ultrapod mini plastic tripod. Of course, you don't need loom cubes and you don't need ultrapods. You can use any two lamps that are identical and can be placed on either mini tripods or light stands or maybe clamped or otherwise securely placed at proper distances and angles. You want to be able to place the lights confidently at exactly the same distance left and right in relation to the center of your copy stand so the light will be evenly arrayed across the artwork. Finally, you'll need a bubble level and a ruler for accuracy of photography and other measurements. Once you've got items like these, many of which you probably have around your house, you're ready to set your own kitchen table. Step one is to attach that smartphone to the tripod mount and then place it on the tripod as you see here. Make sure your tripod is securely placed so that it won't move when you're touching the phone to adjust focus and exposures while you shoot your pictures. I've clamped the rear leg of the tripod to that wooden chair for added stability. Next we'll set up our lights. In this case my loom cubes are on their mini tripod mounts. Whatever you choose for that, make sure it's something that's easy to move. Next, we're going to place the lights so that they're aimed just slightly across a center spot directly underneath your lens and evenly illuminating a space large enough for the biggest artwork that you're going to shoot to fit in. I place a piece of broad black tape in the center of the image area for reference, guided by what I see in my smartphone screen. Then I use my ruler to place the lamps at exactly equal distances from that spot. 
I also measure from the edge of the table as well. That way I make sure that the lamps are properly aligned in that perspective as well. Raise the lamps so that they're illuminating the artwork from as close to a, about a 45 degree angle as possible without creating glare on the surface. If you get some glare, you just want to lower the lamps a little bit. Again, if you don't have loom cubes, you can certainly use any two identical lamps with reflectors that are of equal size and equal quality. You wouldn't want to have a silver reflector on one side and a white reflector on the others. They both need to be really identical. Each with equal intensity bulbs, of course, also of equal Kelvin temperature on stands that are set equally in height and distance. With the tripod and lights in place, we'll move the artwork directly underneath the lens of the phone using the guidelines in the camera and the black tape mark on the table to place it exactly centered. Zoom in and out to fill the frame as much as possible so that most of the digital file will be a record of the artwork rather than a record of the table. At this point, we'll take measurements of the level of the artwork with a bubble level. You probably have one of these in your garage or your toolkit or someplace. If the artwork is uneven or too fragile to place the level on top of it, simply place a piece of cardboard on the artwork to protect it if that's necessary. Now we're going to measure the level of the artwork on the table with the bubble level in both horizontal and vertical directions. We're not going to try to level the artwork at this point because it's much easier to level the camera to the measurements of the artwork and the bubble level than to move that table up and down or try to shim the artwork with pieces of cardboard. As we take these bubble level measurements, we'll put the level then on the smartphone and adjust the tripod mount so that both the phone camera and the artwork are perfectly aligned in both of those directions, horizontally and vertically. That's really, really important. Without this alignment, the artwork will probably look skewed with its parallel lines no longer being parallel. And that's not something that any artist wants to see in the photographs of their artwork. If you create a setup for the largest work of art that you have to photograph first, then it will be very easy to photograph each of the smaller ones quickly by moving them in and out of the evenly lit table underneath the lens. Once the camera is leveled and the lights are evenly illuminating the space without any glare, any works that you put in the same space will be evenly lit. Just one more tip for success in this process. Be sure that you've remembered to turn out all the other lights in the room so that only the lights on your artwork are those that you're controlling for that purpose. Of course, these simple principles can be applied using a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera just as well. But isn't it nice to be able to do such high quality work with a smartphone? I think so.